Hey, welcome to the first part of my tutorial on how to make molds in Blender, at least how I make them. I used to make um, 3D printed prototypes and then pack them in clay and pour plaster and make molds the sort of the more traditional way. But for the current mug that I'm doing, the Deadly Dawn, the Poison Bottle mug, I actually uh, decided to skip the prototype phase and directly print the mold pieces themselves, uh, the master mold, if you will, that I use to uh, make copies in silicon and then make a bunch of plaster copies so that I can slip cast the mugs. I did it for a number of reasons. The main reason I did it though was to just make the quality of the molds better. Hopefully to make the seam lines better, which it did, and make the molds just uh, nicer, easier to clean up, easier to work with, and all those things uh, actually worked out really well. So I'm gonna go through the whole process. I generally use a uh, voxel remeshing add-on called Black Mesh to do this with. But for this first video, I'm just gonna show how it works just with straight up Blender, no additional add-ons needed. In the next video, I'll explain why I like the add-on that I use and how it speeds up my workflow. You don't technically need it, but it's only $20. So like, I, I super recommend picking it up once I um, get into the next one and explain how it works. I think it'll make a lot more sense. The first thing that I do uh, is set up Blender to work in real-world units. I want to uh, get myself out of the way here. And um, let's go ahead and set things up. I don't need the timeline, so I'm just going to join it and get it out of the way. And then I want to turn on screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing. Down in the corner here, it'll show up all of my key presses in case I, I forget to say something as I am doing it. So the first thing I do with every file is set it up so that it works kind of in real world units so that it will export at the right size. So I'm modeling in the right size. Uh, it just makes everything easier. A quick aside, if you haven't watched Andrew Price's two-part intro to Blender tutorial that I linked earlier, I would definitely go look at that. This is not super complicated, but it's also not really a beginner tutorial. There's a lot of stuff that I'm going to do and I'll explain it a little bit as I'm going. I'll still explain some stuff, but for a, a really good overview to get started, if you haven't used Blender before, go check that out and then pop back here. So yeah, the first thing I do is I set up, let's hold this. You can hide this side panel by just hitting the N key. This is where all of my add-ons are. Um, but the first thing we want to do is go over to where it says scene properties and find the section that says units. Metric is, is what we want. We actually want to change this to 0 0.001 and then click this little separate units button and uh, change the length to millimeters. So whenever Blender exports for some reason, it seems to export things at the wrong size. Usually it exports them at like 10% of the size that they should be. So this will set everything up to export at real world size. So that kind of changes the overall scene measurements. There's a couple things that we need to do to make it easier to navigate visually. We're going to go into viewport overlays up here. We're going to change the scale to 0 0.0012. That gets us our, our little grid back at the right size. Hit N to open up the side panel again. And this is giving us the properties for our default cube here, which you can see since we've changed uh, the units is now a two millimeter square cube. What I usually do is scale this up so that it is the size of my build area on my printer so that I have an idea what will fit into the printer as I'm building it. So my printer's build area is 145 millimeters, 145 millimeters, and 175 millimeters. And obviously you can see that scales this way up and it also will clip. It will kind of fade out, and that is because the viewport camera is only set for a certain range. So if you click on the side panel over here that says view, we're going to change that to like, I don't know, 10,000. And now it will not disappear on us when we zoom out. So this represents my printer's build area, and measurements are here. You can see that it changed the scale. So we want to, and this is important, you want to do this regularly. We want to hit Control A and apply the scale. So this all goes back to one and the scale and the size are consistent. It's important for exporting, it's important for Boolean operations, and it's important for a bunch of stuff. 
I want this to basically be uh, lined up with the floor. It doesn't need to be exact because this is just to give us an idea of where the building space in the printer is. But I'm going to grab it, hit G to grab, and Z so that it only moves on the Z axis, and just kind of bring it up to the floor a little bit. And then because we don't, this is just telling us what the boundary for our printer is. I'm actually going to go over here to Object Properties and scroll down to Viewport Display and then change the display to Wire. So now we can see through it. Other objects, when we put them into the scene, will still show up as solid, but this will always just be a wireframe so we know where our printer's uh, build boundaries are. And then what I want to do is go up to our Outliner here. We're going to go up to Restriction Toggles. We're going to turn on Selectability so that we have that as an option. And then let's rename this build area. I'm going to move this to a new collection. So if you hit M on your keyboard, new collection, build area. Click OK. Now that moves that automatically to its own collection called build area. And we're going to check this off. So now we can't select it anymore. It'll be there so that we can see it. And that's very useful, but uh, it will not select anymore. I'm going to get this sun out of the way, just stick it in the camera collection, because we don't need any of that, the sun or the camera, because we're not actually going to be rendering anything here. So that's our build area, and we've set up our real world scale. We're going to make a three-piece mold. So let's, let's start by adding a kind of generic shape to represent our mug or whatever it is that we're slip casting. So I'm going to hit Shift A, add a cylinder, you can see it's really tiny, so we want to scale it up. Scale along the z-axis a little bit, gz, to bring it up. And let's scale it down, because we're going to need to leave a little space for our little spacer cubes that we use to measure the wall, which I'll show you in a second. Um, we're going to tab into edit mode, hit control r to add an edge loop, drag it down a little bit. We're going to scale that out, then hit control b to bevel. Scroll up on your mouse wheel to kind of smooth that out and give it some more geometry. We'll add another edge loop here. Why not? Scale it in. Hit Control B again. And now we have a, kind of a vase shape, I guess you could say, or a little urn shape. So you can see all these little facets, uh, all the little faces that are on it. And eventually we're going to want more geometry when we're 3D printing, but for right now we're not going to worry too much about that. So I'm going to right click and hit Shade Smooth, and then I'm going to go over to Object Data Properties. It's this little triangle looking with points on it over here. And go into the Normal section and click Auto Smooth, and that will get us everything back and smoothed up and crease the spots that we want creased. And you can see over here as I was playing with the size and scale and everything, the scale got out of whack again. So we're going to hit Control A and apply the scale once again. So now we have our basic shape. Let's scale it in a tiny bit. Apply scale again. We're going to move that to a new collection. Let's just call it mug because I'm always making mugs. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. So the next thing that we need to do is make sure that we have enough wall thickness for our plaster mold. So since I just about always make plaster molds for slip casting, that's going to change a little bit soon, but generally plaster molds for slip casting are what I do. I need to make sure that there's a one inch thick wall in all directions around the mug or whatever it is that, that I'm casting. So what I usually do is I will add a cube and you can see it's tiny. We're going to change that to a 25 by 25 by 25 cube. Again, hit Control I and apply the scale. And that is about one inches. And you want to make sure that you have about a one inch thick wall on average everywhere around whatever it is that you're casting. If you it's thinner in some areas, that will be fine um, as long as it's uh, at least one inch in most areas. So in this shape, for example, if this is one inches on the side, um, up here, it's obviously going to be way more than one inch. So it's fine if this one is not quite one inch. We can see here that we're going to have plenty of space around it. It's going to be, you know, an inch and a half in some areas. It's going to be two inches in some areas. So that will work out fine. 
So let's go to the front view and we're going to just uh, check these sides too. Now, since this is symmetrical on X and Y axis, we kind of didn't need to do that. We knew what it was going to be like, but so that's all I do. I just drag these around. Um, Shift D is to duplicate. I usually use Alt D because it just makes an instance of whatever it is that you're copying and it's a little more lightweight on the computer. We're going to select all of those, so we're going to move it to a new collections and just uh, measure cubes. And uh, we don't need that right now, so I'm just going to hide it. I'm going to drag it up to the top so it's a little bit out of the way. We have a pretty good idea that our wall thickness is sufficient. We have our shape that we want to cast. So the first thing I do from here is I will add a cylinder. I'm going to scale that up, and this is going to be the pour spout at the top for when we're casting and we need some place to pour the slip out. Now, there's a few different ways you can do this. I usually like to have a lip on the top of my pieces. You could, if you wanted to, have it just line up completely. You could duplicate this top piece and extrude it out. I normally don't. Normally, I just uh, I make a, a spout piece like this that kind of sits inside the top. So then, when it casts, I will it will actually cast this top area too. Right click, shade smooth, auto smooth our normals again so it looks uh, nice and sharp on the corners where we want it to look. And we're going to move this to a new collection. We're going to call this spout, and we can hide that. Now, if you wanted it to line up exactly with this edge, what you could do is Go into here, tab into edit, hit three, grab that top face, hit shift D to duplicate it, and then P to separate it into a separate model. Now we'll go into that piece that we just cut off and made and hit E and extrude it up. And now you would have a pour spout for your slip to come out or whatever material that you're casting with to come out that would line up exactly with the top. That's not what I usually do, so we're going to stick with what I usually do, which is a spout that looks sort of like that. Next, I want to add another cylinder. So Shift-A, Mesh, Cylinder. We're going to scale this one up. Right-click, Shade Smooth, go over here, click Auto Smooth again so that we're looking at it so that it looks nice. Now, one thing that is really handy to do uh, and I do this constantly, is hit Alt-Z, and that brings you into X-ray mode so that you can see through objects, blah, excuse me, and see what's going on better. I'm gonna drag this up. This is gonna be our piece that we cut out of the bottom. It's gonna be inset into the bottom of our mug or vase shape. Now, you could cut this out of the mug piece itself, but it winds up actually being more work. So usually what I do is I make this piece and I attach it to the bottom piece of the mold, and that'll make more sense in a second. So right now, just imagine that this is the negative space that you want to cut out of the bottom of your mug or vase or whatever it is that you're casting. I'm going to tab in here, scale this in a little bit so it has a little bit of a taper. I'm going to grab this bottom face and move it up. Let's move the whole thing down a little bit. And let's scale it up. And that looks that looks good. Maybe maybe bring it down a little bit. Okay, let's apply the scale again. We're gonna move this to a new collection, and we're gonna call this space stamp. You can call it whatever you want. And again, this will make a little bit more sense in a second. So we're gonna hit Alt Z again uh, and get out of that. We're gonna hide those two pieces that I just made. And now we want to lay out our mold pieces. So let's make a cube. And this is going to be our base mold piece. Scale it up till it's just about the size of this box. S, Z, scale it down. We're going to turn on our measuring cubes again to make sure that this base piece is at least an inch thick. It's plenty thick. Yeah, it's about right. All right, so we get those out of the way. Now what I want to do is line this 
up exactly with the bottom here. So let's apply the scale on that. And then to line this up, we're gonna use object snapping. So I'm gonna hit GZ, oops, Z. Move this down out of the way a little bit. I'm gonna turn on object snapping. And I am going to snap to, let's snap to an edge. So that will snap the nearest edge of this to the nearest edge of the next object that it gets close to, which in this case is this guy here. So with that snapping turned on, set to edge, I'm gonna grab it, G, Z, so it only goes on the Z axis, and then it will snap right to the bottom. That's our basic, uh, sorry, our base mold piece. Now we need a front and a back mold piece, right? So I'm gonna go into side view here, just so I know I'm in side view, and I am gonna take this top piece, I'm gonna hit Shift D, P to separate it. So now I've copied that top face. And I hit Tab to go into Edit there again, Control R to add an edge loop and add the edge loop right in the middle. And one really handy thing that you can do when you're modeling is I use the slash key a lot to go into local view, the slash key on your number pad, which gets everything out of the way and lets you just work on one object directly. So I'm gonna select one of these faces. I'm gonna hit P again, because we need this to be two separate pieces. So now we have two pieces there. And even though it's now two separate models, you can edit them both at the same time. So now we have those two pieces. Uh, and even though they're separate models now, you can edit them both at the same time. So I'm gonna tab in, I'm gonna hit E to extrude right up along the z-axis there. And again, we're gonna go into x-ray mode and we're gonna turn on our little measuring cube so that we can make sure we're keeping that one inch around the mold. G, Z, I'm gonna bring it back down so it's right about there. So you see we have plenty of space all the way around. Hide those cubes again, I'm gonna tab out of edit mode. And so now we have a front mold piece, a back mold piece, and a bottom mold piece. This is you know, almost the most basic mold that you can make. And then it will work for this type of shape, especially because it's simple, it'll work perfectly. So let's move all of these. I'm gonna move this to a collection called base mold piece, because it's our base mold piece. Hide that for now. Let's move this to a collection called front. Mold piece, hide it, move this to a collection called, you guessed it, back. So we have all our mold pieces. So what we can do now is actually hide our mug and let's start with the base mold piece. Now we get into Boolean modifiers. What we're gonna do is take our base mold piece and we're gonna add this base stamp piece to it. I like to do this with collections because it keeps things more organized and you can find stuff more easily and you don't have to retrace your steps. So if you go into add modifier, modifiers tab is this little wrench over here, add modifier, Boolean modifier. In this case, we want union because it's gonna join these two things together. We're gonna point it to a collection instead of an object and then we're gonna go to that base stamp. And let's right click on this, shade smooth, and then once again, our normals. So now we have those two things fused together as one piece. This is where um, your little logo or anything that you would wanna write on the bottom of your piece would go. Now the front mold piece, again, we're gonna add a Boolean modifier. We're actually gonna need a couple of Boolean modifiers. So let's add a Boolean. We're gonna leave it on difference. We're gonna point it at a collection again, and we're gonna subtract our mug from it. Now, I usually like to use the fast solver. We get a little clipping at the bottom here, and this is one of the reasons I prefer to use um, voxel remeshing, and I'm actually gonna throw a remesh modifier in there real quick, and that cleans that up. So I'm gonna leave that off for right now, but this is usually part of my process, so we're gonna get rid of it for the moment. Now let's add another Boolean. Also point that at the collection. We're looking for the spout, which is gonna cut that out at the top. And just to make this a little cleaner right now, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna grab this face, I'm gonna pull it down just a little tiny bit. 
If you hit the shift key, it will constrain your movements a lot. Um, and you do wind up having to make adjustments like that, so it's kind of good that it happens. Just to trim up little bits where the Boolean modifier is behaving strangely. So we'll just drag that down a little bit. It actually won't make a lot of difference for the mold shape. It just helps to kind of cut that out a tiny bit more. So now we have our mug shape and our top spout shape cut out. And if we look at our base mold piece, that will fit right in there like that. It's already starting to look like a mold. So let's hide the base piece again. Here's our front mold piece. Since we have this little stack of Boolean modifiers already on this front piece, what we can do is select our back piece and then select our front piece again, hit Control L and go to Copy Modifiers. And it will copy both of those right over. And now we have it on the back piece too. I'm gonna go into Normals again, check off Auto Smooth so everything looks nice and sharp. And so there you go, that's basically a mold. So the next thing that we need to do is make some mold keys. So collapse all those down. Let's hide this stuff for now. I'm going to add another cylinder. I'm going to scale it up to something I think would be good for a mold key size. Let's zoom in and focus on it. This little orange dot is the origin of this object. So when we use snapping to align these mold keys, we actually want this origin to be a tiny bit above the bottom so that when it snaps to a surface, it will kind of overlap and sit inside that surface a little bit. So let's make the shape of our, our mold key. Um, I'm gonna scale this down a little bit. G, Z to bring it down. And that seems like a good shape. So you see this little orange dot, we want to hit G, Z, we want to drag it up, and we want to put that orange dot so it's a little bit above this bottom face. And shade smooth, auto smooth our normals, and make sure that we apply our scale. For this snapping to work, you need to make sure that this is facing up so that when it starts to rotate, it knows what direction to rotate it in. We're going to hit G, X, we're going to just get it out of the way a little bit. That's our mold key. Let's move this to a collection. We're going to make two mold key collections. We're going to make one for the base mold keys. And then we're going to hit Shift D to duplicate this. We're going to move it to another collection, and we're going to call this one Top Piece Keys. And this will make a little bit more sense in a second. So now that we have our mold key, let's show our uh, base mold piece again. And we're going to go up here. We're going to have snapping turned on. We're going to set it to face. We're going to set it to snap to the center. And then we're going to check align rotation to target. So now if you grab this with the G key, it's going to snap and rotate to wherever you put it. So yeah, there you go. You can see it will snap to any surface and align to the rotation of that surface. So I usually set up my snapping and then sort of leave it turned off because if you grab something and hit the control key, snapping will turn back on again. Uh, and that's usually how I like to do it. It just kind of makes it easier so that you're not snapping things all the time when you don't want to be. So we're going to stick our mold key somewhere that looks good. I mean, you can just sort of eyeball this, depending on how precise you want to be. Later on in another video, I'll get into some ways to like super precisely snap stuff, but it's very time consuming, so I'm not going to get into it now. For now, we are just going to eyeball it, and we're going to change up here our pivot point to the 3D cursor so that we can copy things around this cursor and have them be in exactly the same place all the way around. So now that I've changed that to transform around the 3D cursor, I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate this. I'm going to go to Object, Mirror, Y Global. Now I have a copy in exactly the same spot towards the back. We'll select both of these. Again, hit Shift D to duplicate them. Object, Mirror. This time we're going to go X Global. Now we have all four keys. Now, when you are extruding or mirroring things, sometimes it can turn your models inside out. So it's a good idea to go up here and check 
under your viewport overlays, you turn on face orientation so that you can see what direction everything is facing in. If it's blue, it's facing the right direction, meaning all the faces are facing out, your model's not turned inside out. If it's red, like this, it means that your model's turned inside out, and that's not what you want. So uh, it's a good idea to check this every once in a while. And now that we're done with that, we can shut it off. So this is our base mold key group. We're gonna hide that. We're gonna go back into our base mold piece modifier stack. We're gonna add another Boolean. Again, we're gonna set it to a collection. Let's hit fast and see if it works. And base keys. And change that to union. And now we have our base mold piece pretty much done. It has uh, all of its mold keys. Those might be a little high, but uh, we'll leave it for now. And it has the base cutout that's going to go into the mug or the base shape. Now we can do the same with our front mold piece. And we need to change this back to median point. Now that we have these extra keys, I actually don't need most of them. We're going to get rid of X to delete. We'll just keep that one. All right, so this is our top mold key collections, G. We're going to snap that and place it where we want it to be. Now, in this case, I'm going to scale them down a little bit because obviously there's less space to work with, and I want them to be a little bit uniform. So scale with the S, hit uh, Control A, and apply the scale. And um, Shift D, and we're going to put another one there, and let's put another one here. Let's grab this one, bring it down a little bit so they're kind of even. Uh, let's change this back to 3D cursor, but we need to remember to turn it off again. Again, we're going to select all of these, Shift, Shift D, go to Object, Mirror, X global, and that will put them right where they need to be on the other side. So now we have all of our keys. Let's go change this back to medium point before we forget. So that's our top mold key. So now we can use this to add keys to one piece and subtract them from the other piece. Let's set the origin to geometry because again, that can mess up um, Boolean operations pretty easily. So again, we're gonna add another Boolean. And we're going to go to Collection. And in this case, we're going to go to our top mold keys. And we're going to select Union. So now that adds them. And for our front mold piece, we want to do almost the same thing. Add a Boolean modifier. In this case, we're going to leave it as difference. Change this to Collection. And once again, find those top mold keys. I'm going to change that to Fast. Shade smooth and then make sure. I guess we didn't do this for this one. Turn on auto smooth. Now we have our uh, positive and negative mold keys. So let's turn on that back mold piece again. We're going to go into x ray mode and you can see that those mold keys overlap exactly where they're supposed to be. Now we need to do the same thing for both of these pieces. Let's go to modifiers. And we need to add one more Boolean. And this one is also going to be a difference. We're going to go to Collection, and we're going to find those base mold keys. And change it to Fast again, because the Fast Solver sometimes works better. If you're having trouble, just switch the solver. Um, so now we have the bottom mold key subtracted, the top mold keys added for this piece, so that it will fit together correctly. And then for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Boolean, change it to Fast. Collection, base keys. Now we have our base keys, and if we show this, the base mold piece, we have a base mold piece, and all of our other mold pieces, all with their keys in the right spots, overlapping. So that is a basic three piece mold with keys that will um, fit together when you print it out, and you can use to make a, a master mold, which you can then duplicate in plaster and use for slip casting. 
So the next time I'm going to get into an add-on I use called Black Mesh, which makes this organizationally a lot easier and more flexible. Actually kind of works more quickly, but this is the basis of, of everything that I do. So hopefully that makes sense, and uh, I will see you um, in the next one where we get into some slightly more advanced stuff, uh, and it starts to get a little bit more fun, I think.